Good morning, and welcome to Christ Community Chapel Aurora Campus's online worship service. I'm so glad that you're watching this today. My name is Aaron Arnold, and I'm the worship director here. As we begin our time together this morning, would you join Kayla and I as we sing Jesus Lifted High? I want to see Jesus lifted high. 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 Oh, I want to see Jesus lifted high. I want to see Jesus lifted suffer for a while I have a hope that's undefiled I see the part but not the whole I know this world is not my home I want to see Jesus lifted high I want to see Jesus lifted high. Oh, I want to see Jesus lifted high. I want to see Jesus lifted Crushed and hearts unfold. This King who died and took my place, He stood and walked out of the grave. Yes, He stood and walked out of the grave. I want to see Jesus lifted high. Jesus lifted high. Oh, I want to see Jesus lifted high. I want to see Jesus lifted high. Oh, you get the last word. You always do. You know the best way. Be lifted high. You get the last word. 
forget the last word You always do You know the best way You always move You have the best heart You always will I'm so thankful to be able to join with you this morning and sing the words in that song. Even though we are scattered, we are still united as the church and we still cry out. We want to see Jesus lifted high. That is why we gather, to praise our risen Lord and Savior. Whatever week you come from, if it was an easier or a very difficult week, I'm glad you're here. And I hope that this service is an encouragement to you, especially as we look forward to the week ahead. Let me take a moment and tell you about some of the things coming up in the life of our church. First, Carla Merkel is continuing our Praying Scripture Over Our Communities initiative. She's posting those on social media for you to use as scripture references to pray scripture specifically over our communities. Also, Carla has organized prayer hikes every Wednesday and every other Saturday. If you want an excuse to get out and enjoy the beauty of God's creation and spend some time in prayer, take advantage of those. You can find more information on our social media and online. Also, coming up in November, on the 1st of November, we will be tackling baptism. We're working through all of the details on how to make that safe with the current social distancing guidelines. And if you or someone you know is interested, please let us know. Register online so we can prepare and plan appropriately. Finally, we are very excited to let you know these virtual recorded services are going to end after this week. Today is the last one that will be pre-recorded and we will be offering live streaming of our 9.30 and 11 a.m. services on October 25th. You'll be able to find the link on our website, on our Facebook, even on YouTube. It will be there and available. We'll also be releasing some other resources this week to show you how to access this stream and ensure that you have every resource available to stay connected and united with your church. Now let me transition us into a time of giving. We have the opportunity to worship with what God has entrusted to us. If you're new here, please feel no pressure to give whatsoever. We want you to come to know and trust this ministry before you give. But if you wouldn't mind, text the word Aurora to 474747. That will take you to our online connect card. You can fill that out and we would love the opportunity to reach out to you this week. Say hello and introduce ourselves. For those of us who call this church home, let's give and give generously out of a heart of thankfulness. Let me pray over our offering and the sermon as Pastor Mark is coming to share and continue in our series on the book of Acts. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for this morning, for everything that you have blessed us with. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we confess as a church, yes, absolutely, we want to see him lifted high in our lives, in everything that you have given us. We pray, God, that you would use the resources that we are about to give to spread your gospel to strengthen the movement of your kingdom on this earth. Use us in whatever capacity you will. We love you. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We ask you to speak now through Mark and what you have given him. Speak through your word and change us more into the likeness of your son. It's in his most holy name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Hi friends, welcome back. It's Pastor Mark Lyle. Uh, once again, I am thrilled to be with you. Um, this is actually our last week of recording in this format. If you think back when, uh, when things happened in March, uh, we really kind of began to rethink how do we need to do church? And uh, one of the very exciting things for me was not just the difference uh, in formats that we were able to find some different ways to to keep the church together and to get the word out but also even in just the different talents uh it's been fun for me to to watch aaron arnold 
uh, really expand his talents in the media areas besides the fabulous stuff he does in worship. Thanks to Hannah Thompson uh, for her help as well. And thanks for uh, being able to lean into some of the folks over at Hudson and helping us get online. Um, this has been a great format, but I want to say, we, as, as I've told you or hinted at, we have also specifically felt like we have to do everything possible to keep the church in the rhythm of re regular gathering. And so that was the other main reason that we're going to go away from uh, a couple of these pre-recorded formats and move back to a live stream, uh, or in our case, move to live stream for the first time from Aurora. So we really, really are excited. Um, and I want to say, I, I know there are other churches out there, of course, doing this same thing. And our desire is to be able to bring the church together. Some of you will be members that are connecting virtually. Some of you will be physically present here. And we want to be able to connect you somehow. So if you already know of some ways that churches are doing it and have been doing it for a while and are doing it wonderfully well, great ideas, share those with me. We have never been afraid as a church to steal a great idea with dignity. And we are actually honored when we find out that people take some of our ideas and use them in ministry, because frankly, they're all God's ideas. There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, we want to do that which brings our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ great glory. And so we will do that. Uh, so thanks again for using this format. I look forward to seeing you join us um, at 9.30 or 11 a.m. Um, I also want to take just a minute because one of the things that happens uh, more naturally when we are gathered together is occasionally I will mention uh, some dear friends who maybe really are, are, I want you to keep in prayer. This week, I want to do that as well. Um, I had the privilege to uh, sit with Ed and Barb Harmon, and uh, they are just, you. many, many of you know them. Um, I want you to keep praying. Barb is struggling with cancer, and uh, uh, just continue to pray for them. Uh, we love them and um, want to see them back with us soon. Also, Deb Salapa has uh, continued to battle, and uh, keep her in your prayers. Uh, these are just a few of the people. I know there are maybe some others that I'm missing, but these are a few of the people that we love. And uh, as the body of Christ, we want to be praying for one another, caring for one another, carrying one another's burdens. Uh, so uh, shame on me for leaving you, even though you may not have, you are not able to get here physically. Um, I have left you out in some of that, and I'm sorry for doing that. We're in Acts chapter two. It's a great great book. It is. It, it could easily be a mini-series. Um, I hope you are going through it all the way. Today, what God has given us is the first part of Acts chapter 2. So let me go ahead and read, and then I want to dive in. Um, here's what it says, starting in verse 1, and we'll, today we'll go up through verse 13. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes Elamites and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, 
What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. This is the word that God has for us today. This really is, I I told you the book of Acts is the beginning of the church. This particular event in Acts chapter 2 is recognized as the birth of the church. So let me quickly remind you, in in chapter 1, Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will come and says, "When, when the Spirit comes, when He comes, you will be my witnesses, and you'll be my witnesses throughout the earth. And then Jesus is taken from us. So the apostles, the disciples, uh, realizing that it is not going to be by just following Jesus physically around the world that witness is going to happen. They go and they reassemble in an upper room where they had been staying. And then this remarkable event marking the coming of the Holy Spirit happens. And we call it Pentecost. The church uh, for centuries has referred to this as Pentecost. Pentecost, penta, just means 50. And the, the reference is to the 50th day after the Passover. So the Jews were instructed to mark what's called a week of weeks, Seven, seven weeks of seven days, 49 days, and on the 50th day, they were celebrating two things. One is called the Feast of Weeks, and traditionally for the Jewish people, and this is, this is so cool, I want you to hang on to this. Traditionally, that was a celebration of the wheat harvest. So this is a, this is a festival, um, and they called it a... a uh, a, a festival, a, a pilgrim festival, because typically if you could go to Jerusalem to celebrate it, you would. So realize that this is what's happening at this moment that the church is born. But the other cool thing that is true, traditionally celebrated at Pentecost, this 50th day, was that it memorially, memorially marked the giving of the law, the Torah, to Moses. So Passover, the Israelites come out. They are rescued from slavery. They celebrate a feast of weeks, recognizing the the bounty that God has given, the opportunity to harvest, and they are celebrating that God is the giver of the law. We've said many times, this is law that is still the foundation of every healthy government in the world. And that's what's going on. And all of a sudden, a a sound like a mighty rushing wind comes in, and it says, tongues, as if they were flames of fire, rested above each of the apostles, And what happens is they are able to speak in a language that they have never been able to speak in before. Now, I told you that in Acts, we were going to see some incredibly amazing works, miracles. Um, One of the tough parts of Acts for for our church today, Jesus' church around the world, is trying to understand this thing that we call tongues. Well, I'm going to tell you today, we are actually not yet going to jump into this. I want you to be careful that in at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, what I want you to see is that this specific movement of the Holy Spirit that resulted in the apostles being able to speak in utterances or tongues was specifically about the languages of the other people who were present. I want you to see the movement of God here, because what happened is God, in this festival, drew Jews who were dispersed. Jesus is raised from the dead. Jesus ascends to heaven to be our high priest. And at that time, the Spirit of God comes, 
And the very first thing he does is he empowers the apostles to speak to the scattered Jews in the language they could understand. Look at the beauty, the, the, the symmetry, and the symbolism that is here. Jesus had, had said to his disciples, the fields are white with harvest. Ask the Father to send out workers into the harvest field. And they come to the celebration of the wheat harvest. And God unleashes on them and ultimately us, the gift of the Holy Spirit to allow them to be harvesters, to allow them to go into that harvest in a language they didn't even know that they could speak by the power of the Spirit. And the first thing they did was not say, hey, look at how cool it is that I can speak in a language that I didn't know. Immediately, they began to speak the message of the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of our Savior. And incidentally, it is this event that is the super spreader of the gospel beginning to go away from Jerusalem and out across the world. And I and you are thankful it did because eventually it gets even to the Gentile lands and ultimately to the Gentile cultures, and that's you and me. So you and I are beneficiaries directly of this event. Um, I, I had two questions. I think it really, really good guiding questions for you and me as we go through Acts. Number one is, what happened in the beginning of the church? Because remember, we're, we're doing this journey through Acts because we want to see and understand as best we can what the or true origins of the church are. So what happened? And what is the meaning of that event? And then the second question would be, how could or should it change my life or the life of our church? Well, what happened is the giving of the Holy Spirit. What it resulted in here was the very beginning of the establishment of the witness to all nations. I want to show you one other thing that is really, really cool. In Genesis chapter 11, when, when we're dealing with the beginning of all things, the beginning of mankind, creation, the development of civilizations and nations. In chapter 11 of, of Genesis, um, there's a, an interesting story that we learn as kids, but I'm not really sure we kind of get the gist of why it's important. There, it begins by saying that the, the world had one language. And in that language, they came together and said, let us build ourselves a tower to the sky. We call it the Tower of Babel. Let us build ourselves a tower. And because of the unity of the language, there was cooperation to be able to do this. But in Genesis 11, there's a dialogue by God directly where he says, Look at what they are able to do because of one language. And it's not God saying, I'm so proud of my created children. It's actually a warning language where God is saying, what they are about to do is a false unity that's going to lead to their own destruction. And somehow in the mercy and the justice of God, what he does at that event is says, Let's confuse their language. God, in his wisdom, creates diversity by the use of language. That's wild when you think about it for a minute. And it's certainly the roots of what we have in our different cultures, in our different countries. We know, even in our country alone, where we speak the same language, we don't speak the same language at times. 
We know the strife. We feel the struggle between us. Now take that example, that, that, that truth of what happened in mankind's history, and move it now to the day of Pentecost. Because what you see happen, why this event is so important, is because now God is drawing together those that he scattered by language. He's drawing them together, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he is delivering the unity that now the church will provide. Not the church, the unity that the Spirit of God will provide through this newly established church. It's what Jesus prayed for in the book of John. Make them one as we are one. And the power of this event is that God is beginning the process of restoring us back to one of all mankind drawn to one, united in Christ, held together in fellowship by the power that is the Holy Spirit. I know you may be like me. You love the idea of something, something mystical happening, something uh, powerful, an act, a, a magical healing. But the true power of the Holy Spirit in your life and mine is the way that it draws the church and all of us to God and restores true fellowship and harmony to you and me, but more importantly, vertically between you and me and God. And that's what we see demonstrated at Pentecost in the church. It is glorious. How should it change your life, my life, our life as a church? Well, at a grand 5,000 foot level, it has to remind us that we are called always to not be about ourselves, but to find the ability to communicate to those who are lost in the language they need so that they can hear them. Whether that means practically speaking relevantly in worship to a, a culture that is modern, or whether it literally means training up some of us to send you to lands you don't know, that with languages you don't yet know, to go and speak the name of Jesus and tell of the wonder of his resurrection. And we will continue to be that kind of church. We will continue to be a church that is for Aurora, Ohio, that is for Bainbridge, Ohio, Solon, Ohio, Chagrin Falls, Streetsboro, Kent, Ohio, Twinsburg, yes. But we will also continue to be a church that is about the world, that is about taking the name of Jesus to those who have yet to hear or have been confused by false gods. I'm excited to be that church with you, but it takes work. It takes prayer. Now, let me tell you the other really practical word I have for you. Because, yeah, I would love to pray for the instantaneous movement of the Holy Spirit for you and me to come in and begin to speak even in other tongues. But then I got convicted right away, and I was reminded of Paul's teaching that I have yet to even be able to control the tongue that I have with the language that I have. So let's pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us to speak words of love and kindness and truth to one another, of accountability, of fellowship, in the language we have, and then maybe we will be entrusted with the beauty to speak to others. Pray with me, would you please? Father God, we are humbled by what your Holy Spirit has done in the beginnings of the church and ever since. 
And Father, we are open as believers, as your church, to your wondrous movement and to your revival. So we will depend upon this movement of your spirit. But Lord, please allow us to speak truly about Jesus, to bring glory and honor to the risen one while we have breath and while we have life. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Have a great week in Christ. My worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ that flowed at the cross. I rejoice in my trust in him no other my soul is satisfied in him alone i will not boast in wealth or It's been great to worship with you today. I hope this time has been a blessing to you. Before I send you out with a benediction, 
I wanna provide one more reminder that next week, we will be live streaming the services at 9.30 and 11 a.m. Make sure you mark your calendars so you can join us then. Now let me send you out with the words from Hebrews. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go and have a great week in Christ.